So mash the brake, mash the gas. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we got the keys to the 2022 Chevrolet Corvette and we're gonna have some fun launch control test drive, full look inside and out and see all what the new Corvette has to offer. And the model that we're looking at today is a 2LT coupe with a Z51 package, is finished off in caffeine metallic and has an MSRP at $84,500. Powering the C8 Corvette is a mid-mounted 6.2 liter naturally aspirated 8-cylinder engine. This V8 pumps out 495 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. It's paired only to the 8-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission and sends the power to the rear wheels through a limited-slip rear differential. The overall curb weight is a little over 3,300 pounds but you can expect 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds and a top speed at 194 miles per hour. And then this sports car runs on an 18 and a half gallon fuel tank and you're looking at 19 miles per gallon in the city with 27 out on the highway. The overall length is 182.3 inches with wheelbase at 107.2. Height is 48.6 with width at 76.1 inches. And then the Corvette Stingray also features ventilated disc brakes in all four corners with four piston brake calipers. You're going to get 13.3 inch rotors up front with 13.8 inch rotors in the rear. With the engine compartment opened up, you're also going to notice that there is a rear mounted trunk. This is a pretty large storage area designed to fit the roof, but you can also fit two golf bags in here. It's a really good amount of storage space. And then being a mid-engine car up front, you're also going to notice another storage area. We have the front trunk up here and there's a button on the key fob and one on the front bumper to open this up and we also have a pretty good amount of storage space in here for a few backpacks making the mid-engine corvette a very practical sports car if we move our way to the exterior styling now with the c8 corvette this color combination looks fantastic out in the sunlight it goes from a dark brown to a dark red color and there is a ton of metal flake we get a set of LED headlights with LED daytime running lights. You can see those beams in the top as well as this far side. They have a really aggressive design with the LED projector beam headlight. There's a ton of sharp lines all throughout this front end, really giving it that aggressive and sporty look. And then all the way down low, we have a very large front splitter. Part of the Z51 package gives it a little bit better aerodynamics and of course looks very cool. We have a lot of body work in the front and huge openings with a lot of aggressive mesh to allow plenty of cooling to these radiators. There's also two cameras mounted in the front and you're gonna see carbon flash in the center portion of the front bumper. I love all the sharp lines and how it makes the car look very low and wide. You're also gonna see the new Corvette logo up in front, really cool design the way everything is laid out and then all the sharp lines in the bumper fade their way towards this front bonnet lid and you can see how everything is razor sharp Definitely a fantastic looking car from the front. Looks very small, super pointy, and very aggressive. And then moving to the side profile, this car has a staggered set of wheels with 20s in the back and then 19s up front. These are the Trident wheels. They're a split five spoke design finished off in a gloss silver. And then the black brake calipers look very nice contrasting well. There's a sharp line around this front fender and you can see really nice body work going through these doors all the way to these massive side intake ducts. They're finished off in body color, and you can see a really large radiator mounted on the inside. More razor sharp styling all around that panel, and you can see the sharp design in the lower portion of the doors and the side skirts. The door handles are integrated underneath that side vent, and then we get a set of body colored mirror caps with more gloss black trim all around them. There's also an integrated LED turn signal in the side. Then you can see how the A pillar of the roof is finished off in body color, leading us to the body colored Targa roof. All of those sharp lines that we saw in that front bonnet lid fade their way towards this roof panel and you can see how they cut towards the glass covering the engine. There's a rear mounted camera back here and more of that carbon flash metallic color around the glass panel. If we take a look at the overall side profile, we have really sharp lines above the rear fenders and this has a really cool proportional look. Very edgy, it has that wedge design and it really fits well to be a mid-engine car. Moving towards the back, you're also going to see a body-colored spoiler. This is the Z51 wing you get with that performance package. And then there's also a Stingray logo up top, and Corvette is written out on the top of the rear bumper. We have a really aggressive design for these LED taillights, and they are a three-dimensional look with some red as well as some black housings. 
We get your backup camera as well as a rear engine hatch button on the lower side and then more sharp lines all throughout the rear bumper. There's body colored mesh on the side for heat extraction vents. Then you can see the carbon flash metallic rear diffuser with a ton of openings for more heat extraction. We also get a dual quad tipped exhaust with squared off tips and then the whole rear end really comes together to make this look like a unique sports car. So there's a good look at the exterior with the 2022 Chevrolet Corvette. This color is really cool in person. It sometimes looks black and then it really has that metallic that pops. It's been a sweet car to see for the last few days. So we have Chevy ski fob, we get the Corvette logo on one side, then we have your button for your front and rear trunk, and then we get remote start. So if I lock the car, then double tap on the engine start stop button. Ooh. <laughs> that V8 roars to life. It has a really good sound to it so far. And then just tapping the button again, we can shut that off. We'll get some more revs in a second. But with the car locked, the mirrors are folded. All I have to do is find that door handle and press it. It's gonna automatically unlock and we can check out this interior. This particular spec is finished off in the natural color leather interior. You're also gonna see silver and black accents. Moving to the door panel, you can see all of the black with the natural color stitching all around it, giving it a nice two-tone. We have an armrest right here with a little bit of padding, all the natural color with your grab handle. We also have your window controls and mirror controls, and then some of the Bose audio system with your memory seating. Down below, we get the front and rear trunk button, and then a little bit of storage with more of the stitching. Moving our way inside, we have a Stingray written out on this aluminum door sill, and then all of your power controls are on the left side of the seat, along with an emergency release for the door. You can see how this leather looks, very cool design with the perforations all in the center, and then pretty large lower bolsters with smooth leather. Moving our way up the backrest, you can see how large the bolsters are, more of the perforated leather. We even have matching seat belts. There's carbon fiber trim on the back side of these seats, and then the Corvette logo all into the headrest in the leather. Really nice set of seats. These are the mid-level seats. You can also get a more performance-focused one or a more basic one. Then we have our two-spoke squared off flat bottom and flat top steering wheel with silver trim. And then now inside, keeping my foot on the brake, we can go ahead and fire it up. Taking a look at the gauge cluster now, you can see how it's a full LCD display. We have a little bit of information over on the left, and then we get your tack and speedometer right in the center with your gear. There's information over on the right side that you can configure using the buttons on the right side of the screen. So if I take a look in here, through performance, you have a G meter, you can also scroll through it and see your zero to 60 timer and then the lap timer. If I go over into the trip odometer, you can see a few things that pop up all about the vehicle, you see MPG and other things like that. Then continuing to scroll over, we have audio that'll come up. You also have your maintenance. You can see everything like that within the car. Then we also have options with a few more things that you can set for this vehicle. Then the last setting, you can simplify it. When you tap that, it just makes it a little bit more clean with just the one central dial. And then this screen is configurable with the different drive modes. You can see this center selection right here where it says mode. There's a metal dial that you're gonna twist and you can go into your three driving modes. We're in touring mode now. If you go into sport mode, it changes the configuration a little bit. Then if you go into the track mode, it's gonna get very performance focused with a huge tack. You see your gear and really only the basics. So I really like that. And you can customize the screen to where you can see either of these screen options in any drive mode. So it's pretty cool the way they've done everything. If we move our way to the steering wheel now, we also have your heated steering wheel control and some Bluetooth and audio and volume controls on the right. And then we get all of your cruise control settings on the left. We have a Z mode right here that you can configure and this will basically put it into your favorite driving mode however you would like it. We also get a set of steering wheel mounted paddle shifters finished off in metal. They're about four or five inches and they feel pretty nice in your hands and are very responsive. We also have the turn signal stock on the left side then all of your windshield wipers to the right. And then on the left of the steering wheel, we have some of the heads up display buttons, one of your air vents, and some more stitching, and some really cool contours along the dash. The heads up display will come up right in the center, and it gives you all the information that you're gonna need, like speed and speedometer. And then we have more of the black along the dashboard with all the stitching. 
The 2LT does not have real leather for all the dashboard, but it's a really nice rubbery material. And then if we move our way to the center screen now, we have a lot of different things that can come up. If you tap the home icon, we can see we have your navigation, your phone integration, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto. A few more things that will come up as well. And then you can even have these shortcuts down below. So if we go into your climate, you can see how everything is laid out. And then more shortcuts right here. And we also have a physical home button and your volume control on the left. If I go ahead and put my foot on the brake and put it into reverse, your backup camera is going to come up very HD view. We can also change it how we'd like to see. We have a top down for the front. We also have those two individual front cameras, which is a really cool feature to see. And if I go ahead and put the car back into park, on this right side, you can see a shortcut to your traction control, the cameras, and then we have the front end lift right in the center. We have all of your different gears. You pull, reverse, and drive back to engage them. Then you press P, neutral, and M to go into those different modes. You can see how the leather color looks on everything in the center. We even have your cup holders that'll open up. Two good sized cup holders right here. And then this entire area is pretty much all of your climate controls. Like I showed earlier, you can use all the touchscreen or you can use these physical buttons. We have the driver area over here for your heated and ventilated seats as well as the temperature. We have the syncing for dual zone, automatic, all the different zones and fan speed, air conditioning, recirc, then your passenger seats and then the passenger temperature. And I like how they do get a little LCD screen to see the actual temperature. And of course it corresponds to the screen. We also get some more storage in this center armrest. If I open this up, we have a pretty good amount of space in here for some phones and wallets. We even get USB ports in the back. And then behind me, we have our wireless phone charging mat that you can honestly fit two cell phones in there, one charging and one for storage. Then we get your Corvette Stingray logo back here with one of the speakers and then a good look at the rear end. Another look at the interior, really cool looking interior. I do like this color combination. Then we press this button right here. It opens up the glove box and we have a very large bucket in there for quite a lot of storage space. And then up top, our rear view mirror actually has an LCD screen. That camera on the roof corresponds to this, which is a much better view than actually looking out that window. So I like that aspect. We have garage door opener buttons along your sun visors. Then we have your hazards up top. And then to remove the roof, you're gonna pull down the sun visors and then grab these metal pieces, pull them back to unlock it. You're gonna have one on each side. And then we have the lever in back here. You just press the silver button, it unlocks. And then you can lift the entire roof off. One person can easily do it. Then you can place it into the rear mounted trunk. It'll lock into place. You can close the engine compartment and then you get to enjoy the drop top experience. All right guys, so we are setting off now in the 2022 Corvette. So we are just in tour mode, just the basic to feel it out. And then we'll get to the launch control and all the fun roads. So normal driving, kind of just getting your bearings with one of these cars, it's actually pretty comfortable. The seats are actually really stiff and it took me a minute to get comfortable in them. My initial impression where I didn't think they were too comfortable, but once you kind of fine tune them, it takes a little bit. You can tell that they're very hard, like almost like race seats, but still have a little bit of that comfort aspect. They really use the frame of your body to support you. And I found them to eventually become pretty decently comfortable in them. You do have a really interesting view around this car. You have a really large windshield. You can see the front fenders and the dashboard is really long looking. Uh, the mirrors, this is where it gets a little interesting. When you look in your side view mirrors, the back of the car, it feels like it's a foot taller than your head. You can see how it angles up. And if there is a car behind you really close, like maybe at a stop sign or a light, you can't really see the car behind you in that mirror. So it's a little bit weird getting used to the visibility. And then when you look over your left and right shoulder, there is a lot going on to where comparing it to other mid-engine cars, like maybe a Huracan, a 488, or an Audi R8 or something like that, this doesn't really have the best rearward visibility. However, GM uses this camera system. And if it weren't for that, I would say this is one of the worst visibility cars. But because you have that screen there, you can really see everything behind you. When you go to the actual mirror, you can only see the car right behind you. Other than that, it's kind of useless. So I like that GM uses this camera system. It really helps out with visibility and more cars need to have that. So visibility is decent. It just takes some getting used to. As far as the normal comfort, the armrests are really large and it's a good car that you can kind of just sit back and relax. And with the magnetic ride suspension, it absorbs the bumps really nicely. It's not the quietest car as far as road noise. You know, we're only going 50 miles an hour on kind of a back road, but you can hear the road a little bit. When you're out on the highway, it's not too bad. So overall for normal driving, this could be a daily driver all day long, especially with the front and rear trunk. You have so much storage space and you know, two people can definitely be in here for a full day's worth of driving. So with all that said, this is a sports car. If you put it into manual mode, 
we'll go right up to the track mode. Uh, we get a little bit of lag on the LCD screens, but it comes up with a really cool display. And I like how you get such a huge gear right in the center and the large tack, and it's all in the heads of display as well. So that was up to the 80 uh, and down to 60. The acceleration is pretty good in the car. It's got a very smooth linear power delivery. It's just very smooth all the way up to redline. You're gonna be shifting around 6,000 RPM. So it's not that bad as I initially thought back of when I've driven other cars that were not used like this one is. And um, I like how it is very fluid. I wish it had a little bit more rev to it, but you got the Z06 for that. So the Z06 revs to like eight or nine, but it's actually not bad. You can really use all the power when you're on the back roads. The steering in track and how is really stiff. It's got a good low end grunt to it. You know, it's not the fastest car out there, but it really carries its weight and is so balanced. And the steering is fantastic. <laughs> I think this is a car, so I was in the mountains with it all the yesterday. This is a car you can really use its full potential on the streets and on the mountains and just really ring it out. You do have to use all the engine. Short shifting in the car, you're not gonna get all of the fun out of it. so well and is fluid so fluid to drive i really have been enjoying taking this on the fun roads because it, it handles so well and like i said you can use all the power you can really floor it pedal to the floor red line <laughs> and then with all of that we get launch control and most of the weight is actually in the back it's like 60 percent so we go back into the track mode. I'm gonna leave it in automatic. And then in track mode, tap the traction control icon. And from here, ESC will go on sport. So mash the brake, mash the gas. <laughs> and then switching to the POV angle, we will do the exact same thing. And I will go to the zero to 60 timer. four seconds so obviously the manufacturer's claim time is uh, <laughs> less than three seconds but quite honestly you know on public roads we are also using um, winter tires on this car so 3.4 pretty darn good and even looking at my Nissan GTR with way more horsepower I'm getting a little bit quicker than this around 3.3 on the streets spinning first and second gear though so this car with summer tires this is gonna hang with the best as far as a 0 to 60 launch the only drawback is since it doesn't have the top end comparing it to like the new Z06, it's the rolling performance that, you know, it's decent. So we're in third gear, 3000 RPM. So 40 to 75, kind of your passing time, still plenty good. I mean, healthy motor, good power. You just really need to use it all, but definitely a fun car to drive. And then like I said, you get this really cool view out. You can see how the dashboard is long, so it takes a little bit getting used to that. And then up front, you can see how the fender flares and everything look. But certainly an awesome car. You can see how you got a little bit over your right shoulder. All right, one last acceleration. We're getting to second gear at 25. <laughs> All right, well that unfortunately is gonna wrap it up for the 2022 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. This is the new C8 mid-engine car. Very nice car all around. We have quite a few videos with us. We've had it for a whole week, so check out them all linked in the description below. If you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for plenty more content, and we'll see you all in the next video.